Hey, 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 so it's been quite a long time since I last recorded this. It's actually been several months, maybe since late February, early February or, or late January, I'm not quite sure. And the reason I decided to come back into this is because I was, during this time I was battling a lot of things, really battling a lot of excuses. Excuses being like, what am I going to talk about next? What do I have to say on this uh, channel? And it gets, it seems to me as though there are moments in time when life wants to bring you down. And maybe life isn't really bringing you down, life is just telling you there's a lesson you're refusing to learn. And I have seen that time and time again in my life, especially this last couple of months. The biggest lesson being that there's not really, there are very few people you can depend upon more than you can depend upon yourself. The number one person you can depend upon is yourself. And I'm not saying people out there trying to get you or people out there trying, you know, to bring you down. No, no, no. I'm saying that you can guarantee that the one person, the one person who cares about you the most is you. People out there, they do want to help you. They do seem, they are concerned, maybe you do have friends, your family who are actually concerned about you. They're concerned about their well-being, about your well-being. But when times of trouble come, you have to realize that those people can turn away, not because they want to turn away, but because they have their own lives to deal with. They have their own problems to deal with. And your, your problems, no matter how big they seem to you, are not as important to them. When I watch some of the YouTube videos or Instagram posts of people speaking about, you know, how hard it is to be a man, you know, I do agree, I do agree. It does feel quite a lot, quite often that people don't really care about what I'm going through, right, what men go through generally. It's like, unless you have other male friends who understand what you're going through, you know, your, you know, your girlfriend won't care, your wife won't really care, you know, she, she'll care only insofar as it affects her. And then once again, it's not because these are bad people, it's because they have other things going on in their lives. So as a man, what do we do? As men, what do we do? We, we shoulder our own burdens, and more often than not, we also tend to shoulder, shoulder other people's burdens. And this is quite a challenge. As you all know, I run a business, and late last year, I got the chance to partner with a certain man. The man is a very decent man. Actually, I really admire this man. He's found success in this field and he's been in this field for quite a long time, for over two, two decades. And I was, I wanted to rush into this contract because, you know, it, it seemed as though this contract would promise me, you know, success sooner than I expected. And so I was meeting up with the man, having discussions, looking back and forth on the contract, you know, going just back and forth, back and forth. Which is fine, does make sense when you're signing over something as important as this. And last week I was studied, so I usually read a chapter of the Bible, two chapters every day. And I'd finished reading the Bible, and I say I went back to Genesis, and I'm going to read everything again from the beginning. And last week I came upon this Genesis chapter 25, verse 29 to 34. Let me go back up. This is something I've mentioned in the podcast, in my podcast, whereby the Bible can mean abs everything in the Bible seems to mean absolutely anything. But when you've lived that, it definitely means something, right? You can read the Bible several times, a certain chapter several times, but it can mean anything or nothing at all. But then you have an experience, and now that chapter makes absolute sense. Now, this Genesis chapter 20, 25, verse 29 34, I've read it so many times, a story I've heard over and over and over again, but it never made sense to me until last week. And this is how the chapter goes. I'm going to read it for you, don't mind. Uh, so it, it goes like this Now Jacob cooked a stew, and a sow came in from the field, and he was weary. And the sow told, said to Jacob, Please feed me with that, with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. 
But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave, gave Esau bread and steel of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now think about this. What does that story mean to you? Just another story. It means nothing. Selling your birthright, what does, what does that even mean? But last week I realized this story is speaking to me. I'm hungry. I'm broke. I'm starting a business. It's not growing as fast as I thought it would grow. And a man comes and tells me, hey, Oscar, just sign over that business to me and I'll give you everything you need. And it makes sense. It makes sense. I'm hungry. He's giving me the money right now and money perpetually for the foreseeable future. I was about to sign away my birthright. Much like Esau, I came in from the fields weary and I find this man who's cooking stew with lentils and I tell, and he tells me, hey, if you want to eat, just give me what you have. Give me everything you have. And I'm not saying this man is vindictive or cunning. I'm just saying he's, he's doing what a businessman does. And I was about to do what a hungry man does. So I didn't sign the contract. I decided to push forth through the pain, you know. As they say, when you're in hell, just keep walking. Just keep walking. Don't, st- don't stand still. Just keep moving. You're going to get through it at some point. And yes, in moments like this, even though I'm walking through hell, yes, I'm still feeling the fire. My skin is still it's falling off. Like I'm in pain. I'm actually in pain right now. And I'm stressed out, you know. This is something I haven't told anyone. So a few years back, actually for several years of my life, I've been having this terrible pain in my stomach. A terrible, terrible pain. And so I went to uh, a general pr- practitioner. He gave me some medicine. I described my pain. And he recommended that I get an endoscopy. So I go to another clinic where I get the endoscopy done. And the guys who are doing the endoscopy tell me like I've, they've never seen a stomach that is as clean as mine. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm in so much pain all the time. I'm in so much pain all the time. What is this pain? Now it dawns on me, this pain might just be stress. I'm just stressing out all the time. And moments like this highlight that stress to me, whereby, you know, I'm I'm fighting a demon that no one seems to see, you know? And here, right now, the demon is obvious. It's obvious to me, at least. You know, it's financial worries, worrying about the business. And more so, it's worrying about feeling as though there's no support behind me. And I'm not complaining, as I've said in the beginning. At the end of the day, the one person who cares about me the most is me. And that's why I do this. To remind you, as I have come to remind myself, that when, as, insofar as problems are concerned, you are your only number one. Not, not that they don't care, but they have, they have to be their own number one as well. And you can lean on Christ, you can lean on God. That's what, that's what God is there for, you know. God isn't there to solve your problems. God is there to say, you know what, buddy, you know, if you need to cry, hey, get down on your knees. I'll listen. And yes, sometimes I do feel like crying. Man, the stress is extreme sometimes. I was having this discussion with my wife a few days ago. And, you know, pillow talk, and she was saying, and she was asking me, Oscar, what's on your mind? And I paused for a few minutes. Paused so I could try and clarify all the thoughts to myself before I relay them to her. 
and as and all I could relay was I have so much anger and sadness in me. I have so much anger and sadness in me, and I The thing here being that sometimes you need someone to talk to, you need someone who can at least pretend to understand what you're going through. Like I don't want to be dealing with all of these things alone, I don't want to deal with my own problems, with my wife's problems, with my kids' problems, you know, with my friends' problems, with my family's problems. Yes, sometimes the burden gets too heavy. And sometimes there's I just want to lock myself away and just, you know, just hide somewhere, just vanish from the world for a few days, clear my head. You know, it's a miracle. I haven't gone back to drinking it. You know, I'm going to thank AA for that because moments like this make drinking seem very rational. That you can turn to someone and say, hey, I need your help with this. I kind of can't do this on my own. And they say, no, I don't feel like doing that now. It, it's hard, it's hard. And yes, this is, this is not the first time I've gone through this. I'm sure most of you watching and listening have gone through the same thing, whereby you feel like, hey, I thought you were with me on this. What's happening? But then you realize, you know, it's like, hey, yes, I'm, I'm number one. I have to be number one for, my, for me. I have to be number one for myself because at the end of the day, you know, I was having another discussion with my friend and the discussion was this, as a man, if you are a man with a family, they will blame you when they're hungry and they will forget you when they're satiated. When they're sati satiated, yeah. you know, they'll blame you when they're hungry and they will forget you when they're satiated. Growing up, I remember the same with my father, whereby it seemed as though whenever there were problems, you know, somehow the blame will fall on him. And when things were good, I don't recall us ever telling him thank you. But I know the man was stressing out, you know. Looking back, I kind, I kind of recall that look in his eye, and I know that that was... I have that same look right now in the mirror. It's like, hey, the look of like I've got this thing inside of me that I just need to let out, but is anyone willing to listen? Is anyone going to listen? Or will they tell me to man the fuck up? You know? <laughs> and it's fair enough, fair enough. I should man the fuck up. But nonetheless, nonetheless, dear listeners, it does hurt. It does hurt. I mean, I want, I want it to be. I want it to be a clear path, whereby you know, like I'm going through something. I can push as far as I can. When I, when I hit a wall, can I have someone to talk to, someone to hold my hand and say, you know, dude, you know, not even help me through. Just tell me it's gonna be okay. But it's very hard to know that at the end of the day, the only person telling me is what it's gonna be okay is me. It's me. I'm the only one telling me it's going to be okay. And of course I do have, I do pray, I do read the Bible, I go to church, I go to mass, but those things, they all do help, but I really, really would like to have another human being tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. How many men are going through it, huh? How many men are going through the stress, the anxiety? I look to my wife and sometimes my wife says that I always com I always tell her she's complaining, yeah? You know? Maybe she's not complaining. Maybe what she's doing is the healthy way to live your life. Whereby it's like when she has one tiny problem, she just blurts it out, right? And it seems to me like complaining because... It, as, as a male, as a male human being, you learn very early in life that people don't have time to listen to you. You know, as... My assumption is, from watching the females around me, is that females tend to complain. No, no, complain is the wrong word. They tend to make a point of the fact that they're not being listened to. And that becomes another ish point of concern. Right? As a man, I can't make the argument that they're not listening to me. Because the argument will then be. Why are you not trying to solve the problem? Any man who is married or in a relationship, have you ever tried to tell your significant other, hey, just do this and you solve the problem? 
How often does that work? It almost never works. Because they just want you to listen. They don't want your advice. They don't, they don't actually want to solve the problem. They want you to listen. But everyone wants the man to solve the problem. Will you solve the problem? Can you solve the problem? How will you solve the problem? When will you solve the problem? And the answer to all of these questions most of the time is, I don't know. I'll have to wait and figure it out. It's going to take some time. And this time takes a toll on the human soul, you know, it's... Is it weakness? Is it... I was telling my wife how sometimes, yes, like I've said here before, I just want to hide somewhere and just vanish from the world, you know. I see some posts saying that, you know, the disconnected father takes really long bathroom breaks, you know. And I realize I do the same thing. I take long bathroom breaks. Is that because I'm disconnected? Is it because, man, there's something going on that maybe they... You know, it's... Even think about that. That's a woman will see a disconnected father takes really long bathroom breaks. What is that man going through, going through? Whereby, like, being in the bathroom is his only fucking escape. Right? Being... What is that? Will that woman even take time to consider that this man is hiding in the fucking bathroom. What in the fuck is he going through? You're saying he's disconnected. Hey, is anyone trying to reach out to him? It's no wonder men are more likely to kill themselves. No wonder. It's like this dude is hiding in the bathroom. That's the only place. He finds peace in the bathroom. You know, when I see all these online men's groups, you know, it makes sense. So people who say it's a scam, they're being taken advantage of. No, 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 no. They've found people who actually try and understand, you know. Women who say, what's up with all these men's groups? You know, it's just yeah, boys playing games and doing that, that, that. No, no, no. They have found people who actually give a damn. And if, I'm, if I can pay so people can give a damn, I will pay so they can give a damn, Right? I, mean, I, I would rather not be told that I'm, I'm being I'm disconnected because you know no one no one is asking me how I'm doing is everything okay with you you know so I have to go and find peace in the bathroom no one reaches out you know and when I try to speak you know it's like you know I might discuss a problem and as soon as I ask, it's, I start discussing my problem you know, let me tell you, this is actually the facts on the ground. I, swear, I keep looking at my watch. Time is of the essence. I keep discussing, I try to discuss things with my, with my wife, with my, you know. I'm going through A, B, C, D, and I've noticed a pattern where as soon as I start discussing this thing, she will, you know, keep quiet for a moment. And then tells me something that is totally unrelated. You know, talk to me about her friends. You know, something her friend did this, her friend's kid went to school the other day, this happened, like... What was I? Did, did everything I say not matter at all? Your friends' lives, your friends' lives are more important than your husband, the man who you depend on to fix everything. And I'm not saying she's a bad woman. This is something I've heard from all my friends. You know, it's like women say men don't listen, but do they actually try and listen to us? Once again, I'm not blaming women. It's like maybe men, we just need each other. We don't. We need each other in the sense that you need a man to lean on, a man to understand you. You need a brotherhood. Yes, you should have a wife, son, a family. All of these things are wonderful. It's God's blessings on, upon mankind. But when it comes to people who, you, who can listen to, who you're willing to listen to, you know, like just form a brotherhood, find a brotherhood. And they might not help you solve all your problems, but God damn it, you need someone who's willing to listen. You need someone who's willing to listen because, like, man, the, there's a haunting silence in being a man. There's a haunting silence all around us. Like, I don't know what's happening next. I don't know what's coming. You know, I'm always the, the anxiety, the fear, you know, the self-loathing, you know, all these things. You know, 
there is no privilege in being a man. The only privilege you have is that, yes, you do get all the responsibility. You get all the responsibility. And with that comes all the blame. The privilege is that you get all the responsibility, but you also get all the blame. You can't have all that power without any of the blame, and responsibility and the blame. It's if I say I'm the man of the household, I'm the leader of this household, that means everyone's problems in this house is mine. <coughs> but their problems, but my problems, they don't care about me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm turning this into a venting session. You know, I'm just going to pause right here. Thank you for listening. I hope to catch you again when I do make another recording. I'm going to try and make this a daily thing once again. Not try, I will do. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend as I know. I will praise be to God. Amen.